All right. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Good. Who? <laughs> I hear you. Uh, who is um, who's who's first year here at TSAC? It's good. Okay, good. It's a lot of new faces. Um, what I want to go over today is essentially what we're doing, much like what Dell said, uh, within the high intensity tactical training program for the Marine Corps. Uh, we base, you know, we've all heard functional fitness, right? What is functional fitness? And this term keeps coming up, and everybody has their own philosophy of what that is. We base our functional fitness on essentially seven foundational movements, okay? And that is based off of our strength and power phase. So within the program, obviously, we have our active dynamic warm-up or slash movement prep. Uh, and then we've got our skill work, which is our speed, agility, endurance. Uh, and then we've got our strength and power phase based on seven foundational movements. So what we're seeing or what we obviously looked at is Marines in tactical situations. What type of movement patterns are they most, uh, what are they seeing the most of? Okay, what are they performing the most movement patterns with? So uh, what we're going to look at here, well, that's blurry as anything. You guys see that at all? A little bit? Okay. Huh? It could be, dude. Uh, so seven foundational movements, real quick. I'm going to go through these. I'm not going to talk a lot. I'm going to get you guys out here on the floor and go through these movement patterns just so you can see it. Uh, it's not a real rocket science behind these movement patterns, okay? There are, pa there are movement patterns that we've done for over 100, 150 years, okay? But they're specific to the tactical athlete, specific to the Marine, all right? So squat, lunge, plank. Rotation, hinge, push and pull. Pretty simple, right? The biggest, biggest thing we look at, uh, again, the tactical side of this is what they're doing in those situations, okay? So we looked at these top seven, and again, 95% of the time, uh, they're hitting one of these movements. On this little diagram here, essentially what you're going to see is uh, within our program, we have Three main modules, okay? Combat hit, warrior hit, and athlete hit. Within those modules, every workout in the strength and power phase is our seven foundational movements. So on the left there in the yellow column, which you can't really see because it's in white, hinge, push, pull, squat, lunge, plank, rotation. The first red column is warrior hit, okay? So we will do, the Marine will do a clean variation a vertical push, a horizontal pull, a front load squat, lateral lunge, dynamic plank, ballistic rotation, all right? To avoid overtraining or undertraining, the next workout is athlete hit. They will do for their hinge snatch, horizontal push as opposed to a vertical and so forth, okay? So it provides a comprehensive approach to make sure that that Marine is getting every single plane of movement, okay, within their workout program. All right, so we're not just working frontal, we're not just working sagittal or transverse, we're working all planes of movement, all right? Well, that's the slides, and now we're going to get busy. So what we're going to look at here is I'm going to bring some of our awesome strength coaches uh, within the program. These guys are all my best, okay? So... When we bring them up, what they're going to do is they're going to bring uh, Master Sergeant Jackson, active duty Marine. Uh, he's going to come up and he's going to do a quick demo of the movement drill. Uh, and then I want you guys to participate with those movement drills, okay? So what we've got is barbells. Uh, we're going to utilize barbells, sandbags, battle ropes, and kettlebells. All right? And we'll show you those different variations. First, what I want to do is come out and uh, who wants to participate? If you want to participate, raise your hand. I need like 15 at least. 14? Hit people, let's go. Somebody come up. We're gonna do a quick warm up down here. We'll start down on this end. We'll do a quick warm up and then we'll get you guys into the movement pattern. You guys hop in anytime, all right? We're not gonna crush you. Yeah, all at this end. Now let's go about uh, three lines, okay? So one at the cones and one right in the middle. It'll be cool. I'll put this down. 
Okay, very simple, guys. This is going to be pretty easy. Jackson, come on out, babe. Pretty simple. All we're going to do is a side straddle hop. Elementary version, jumping jacks, okay? Jumping jacks. So give yourself a little bit of room. If you can, stagger yourself. Side straddle hops. Go. Okay, group go. Okay, good. All right, pause. Okay, we're going to go walking knee hugs all the way down to the next set of cones. You're going to drive the knee up to the chest. We're going to dorsiflex the toe, okay? So whatever foot is off the deck, dorsiflex the toe. If he's got good balance, which you do, right? He's going to come up on the foot with the foot that's on the deck. Okay, up on the toe. Okay, pull it up right to the chest, okay? First group, go down. Second group, follow down. Third group, follow down. Fourth group, follow down. I know you guys have seen this a million times, so bear with me. Last group, up, follow down. Make sure we dorsiflex the toe up. Tell me why we dorsiflex the toe up, guys. Anybody know? When we're working these movement patterns. Anybody? What's that? Good, it relates to sprints, right? So if we're, if we're sprinting and we're not dorsiflexing the toe, toes down toward the deck, our foot strike on the, on the deck is going to be too premature, okay? We're not going to get a full strike through, through the deck. So yes, that's why we work that. All right, next one is uh, Highland Flings. So we're going to cross our arms. Cross your arms. <laughs> okay, cross your legs. Whatever arm you have crossed on top, is the same foot you'll have crossed over the other one, okay? We're going to go out and back in and just alternate your feet and hands, okay? Make sure you got room. Group ready, go. Okay, good. Very nice. Okay, next one is Frankenstein. So we're going to take both hands out front. You need a lot of room for this, huh? You're going to drive the foot up, you're going to drive it up, and he's going to strike down right underneath the hip, dorsiflex in the toe. Again, if we don't dorsiflex the toe, our foot strike is going to be out in front of our hip, not under the hip where it should be, okay? Directly under the hip, and we strike down like you're striking a match, okay? First group down, go. Second group down, go. Drive it up as high as we can, strike it down as hard as we can. Third group, go. Fourth group, go. Tighten your core as you do this. Don't be lazy on top. The hardest part, if you, guys, if you guys notice, if anybody's touching out here, they're not moving very fast forward, are they? It takes a long time. All right, next one is uh, uh, long striders. So he's, Master Sergeant's going to take one arm out in front. Opposite foot is out front, just like we're sprinting. All right, we're going to switch arms, switch legs at the same time. Stand on the balls of your feet. Okay, there we go. Group ready? Go. And relax. All right, now, good. All right, let's spread out a little bit. Come out, walk it out. The last line can stay at those cones. We're going to filter all the way down, and we're good. Uh, hold the positions there. All right, we're going to go in a plank position. Okay, so going right down on your bellies, chest. Okay, we're going to do what's called a groiner. Okay, groiners are, where we, he's going to be up in a plank position. Ops, one foot's going to come up next to the hands. On the outside of the hands, not a lot, a lot of mountain climber, a groiner. The, uh, the heel is on the deck, and we're going to rotate our feet and switch them back out, okay, as fast as possible, okay? Full range of motion. We're going to go for about 10 seconds. Ready? Go. Keep your movement going. When you're done with those, you can stand back up.
Betting this right. Okay, and last one we're going to do real quick, split jack forward. We're going to take our uh, side straddle hop. Arms going to go up top. Foot is going to be split. So split jack forward. And he's going to do a regular jack, moving the feet back and forth. Okay, stand on the balls of your feet. All right, group ready? Go. Do hinge first. Boom, good. Nice job, guys. All right, here's what I need you guys to do. This everybody's participating. Do me a favor. I want you guys grouped just like pretty much like you are, okay? Uh, and going this way, I want about five groups. So group one, group two, group three, group four. That should be fine, okay? Every group, grab a kettlebell of your choice. Grab a barbell. Grab a rope. And then grab a sandbag, please. Sandbags are right over here. So we should have a rope, sandbag, barbell, and kettlebell. One per group. We have, if we have enough kettlebells variations-wise in terms of weight, you guys grab those. We have plenty of those. We just spread out on the floor, guys. Make sure we have plenty of room around your group, OK? We can use the floor. Uh, we face just right up toward the front here. It's fine. Should have a rope. We, Hutch, we can take those ropes off real quick, please. And we'll use the weight for rotation. Who's doing hinge? Hutch. All right, so the first movement pattern we're going to work on is the hinge. OK, the hinge. All right, again, you notice different variable equipment out here. Within the program itself, we really work on every piece of equipment, OK? What if we don't have a sandbag? What if we don't have a kettlebell? Um, we can still work the hinge movement and all seven foundational movements by using any piece of equipment. And so we've really tailored it down to, if I don't have a piece of equipment um, that is on the workout, then I can use something that I do have, OK? So whether it be even a TRX, um, sandbags, kettlebells, everything, uh, it's all built in, OK? So Hutch, you grew up first. You're going to show everybody the hinge real quick. Can everybody see Hutch right here? All right, good morning. Um, Ryan probably started the hinge off for one reason. In my opinion, it's probably one of the most important movements um, when it comes down to the uh, hip program. One, basically being generate most of all your power from where? From the hips, all right? This is where you generate everything, right around the area. The uh, exercise that I showed today is just going to be a basic kettlebell swing. Um, it's not going to be difficult. I know there's a lot of different flavors of kettlebell, you know, styles. Um, but what I'm going to do today is kind of what we use for the active duty uh, Marines. Our biggest objective is injury prevention. So when we do kettlebell swings, we do a very basic foundation, very simple. And the principle is an EV or even a novice, you know, a beginner, okay? So, you guys can do what? Step forward, please. What we're going to do here, starting off, a lot of people, what they'll do at the beginning, when it comes to the kettlebell, they'll actually just take it up and they'll stand here. All right? This will be their you know, initial move before they actually start to swing. Where's he at? So, what I said, what we, what we do is you're actually going to take the kettlebell, you're going to reach out. Okay? You want to grab the kettlebell? Slightly, maybe forward about 45. From this position here, you're going to slide the kettlebell back. All right? That's going to be drill one, okay? That's what we're going to work on first when uh, we're going to our drill one, okay? This is the initial movement of the kettlebell swing, okay? So you come back, drop it back, boom, drop it down, stand up, okay? Again, number one initiative for, or number one movement for the uh, base kettlebell swing. Second movement, same concept, you're going to come back, except this time, after you're coming back, you're actually going to drive the kettlebell in between your legs, okay? Very important, spinal line, okay? Very, very important. A lot of people as they're doing as they're doing kettlebell swings to help you up, all right? Your head goes with your body, okay? Make sure you keep spinal line the entire time. All right, so in this position here, Jack's going to come back. He's going to come back, drive through his legs, and he's going to just pretty much begin a basic kettlebell swing. We do not go above the horizontal, all right? Just pretty much basic. Since I know there's a lot of different, again, a lot of different flavors and variables on a lot of people's you know, opinions on going you know, above uh, 
horizontal, but for our program, we're not going above horizontal. Okay? Alright, so go ahead and just start doing a uh, little swings. I'm going to see you guys kind of have to go. Just give me like, yeah, just give me like. I know what you're going to be doing, okay, on a basic swing. One, a little bit more knee drop, okay? We're doing the hip hinge. You want a little bit more knee bend, not a lot, okay? You don't want to do a lot of knee bend, but a little bit of knee bend in this position here. Again, the knee bend is a low principle, all right? Baseball. Sit up here. If I just sat there and tried to basketball game and all I did is this, nothing's going to happen, all right? It's a low principle. You have to move the knees. Just a little bit, not a lot. Don't over exaggerate that, okay? So again, a little bit more knee bend. One of the things also that I noticed that he was doing is when he comes back, he was doing this. Go lunge, Max. You good? Yeah. All right. Uh, one of the things I noticed he was doing is that the kettlebell is actually down really well. Okay? When you're swinging the kettlebell and you keep the kettlebell down low, like knee level, all right, what's happening to your back? I know. Yeah. I'm saying. A little bit of over, over or under extension, more or less, all right? Coming in. What the objective on this is literally. If I had a clipboard, I'll put it right here. I want him to actually hit. Uh, the effect on that is when he comes back, you literally want your body to actually draw back into this position. That way, when you get the initial feedback, it's an explosive movement forward. Okay? Again, all through the hips. The hinge is by far yes. one of the most important foundational movements, okay? Everything is generated from this area, all right? Chest right down below the knees. The hip hinge, again, all power is driven. Any type of exercise that we're going to do here after this is going to be more or less in a hinge position, okay? Maybe not playing goals, but anyway. All right, so um, we're going to bring off in your groups. We're going to do how much time? Let's go about um, 30 seconds a person. Uh, just get the movement pattern down. Just understand the hinge portion of this. Uh, coaches, you guys are going to be roaming around, making sure everybody's doing it correctly. And you guys can coach each other. What we want to do is get a flavor of this right now, and then at the end we're going to do a quick circuit, okay? So just a quick flavor of it. Yep. Sorry, Hutch. That's why you started off, man. All right, just so we keep moving on for the sake of time, go ahead and get right back into your uh, group areas real quick. The next movement pattern is going to be uh, the lunge. Next foundational movement is the lunge. Uh, in our hip program, we have four categories of lunges. We have a uh, linear lunge, which includes forward and reverse, as well as lunges that have a uh, slight vertical component, as well as lunge variations. We have lateral lunge, um, we have a suspended lunge, and we also have a recovery lunge series uh, in our hip reload program. Um, when we lunge, go ahead and pick up the sand bag, Master Sergeant. We want to first make sure that we have an active platform with our upper body. So we have our chest spread, our shoulder blades are tucked in to our back pockets, our core is engaged here, and then we're also making sure that our toes and our knees and our hips are all aligned forward. So master starts going to check his toes, make sure they're pointing forward. And then during the entire exercise, he's going to maintain these platforms 
and maintain the direction. Uh, he can hold on to the sandbag with one arm or two arms. He can use the other arm for balance if he wants. And he's going to make sure his head's neutral and we can look down his eyes a little bit if he wants to make sure his chin stays uh, horizontal to the floor. As he steps, he wants to step far enough where he has at least a 90 degree angle in his front leg and far enough where he has greater than 90 degree angle in between his uh, front thigh and back thigh. And so he might want to take this. And as he goes down, Again, he's going to maintain his direction with all his joints in his lower body. He's going to make, maintain that spread chest. He's going to make sure his shoulder blades stay tucked in. So his core stays active through the entire exercise, both when he starts as through his descent in the bottom position and back up through the ascent. Now, as he comes back up, he's going to drive through his front leg. And he's going to pull that front knee up so it's at least 90 degrees. And he's going to maintain that dorsiflex foot position. But he's also going to make sure that his his uh, backside glute here is active the entire time. So he's not just pushing with his front leg, his backside is also working for him as well. And also at the top, he's going to make sure and work to avoid uh, his foot rotating in or out. And so we go ahead and perform uh, about three on each leg for us. Again, chest is spread, shoulder blades tucked in, working hard to maintain his direction. We probably like him to take a little more aggressive steps so his back leg has a little more aggressive angle or is greater than 90 degrees. Oh, all day. It's <laughs> on. So regardless of the lunge variation, we want those basic principles. We want a good spread chest, shoulder blades tucked in, good direction through lower body joints, active core, then maintain that through the starting position, <laughs> the descent, the ascent, and the finish. And again, on the back side especially, make sure that glute is active through the entire exercise. So we'll go ahead and uh, add the four, we have five groups right? Four. four, yep. So we'll have the four groups, go ahead and try that, maybe two reps on each leg and switch. Um, there's some heavier sandbags here if you want to challenge. Yeah, go ahead and grab the sandbags, guys. Hop back up. Let's do a couple on each leg. Make sure you really engage the core on this, OK? If you don't engage the core, your balance will fall. Good balance, engage the core. All right, good job, guys. All right, we're going to keep moving on. Thank you, Brad. All right, next movement pattern is going to be uh, the push. Push. Mr. Raymond Anderson from New River, Camp Lejeune. All right, uh, the next foundation of movement, we're going to do a push, and we're going to perform a, a push press, uh, my favorite one. So the movement that we do is a dip and drive motion. It's the same motion you would do when you're doing a jerk, a push jerk, or a power jerk. So we'll grab the barbell, hands right outside the shoulders, we'll pick the barbell up and get a nice erect position. And if you'll notice, see how the elbows are pointing down at an angle? You can be really explosive with your arms, with your elbows pointing down at an angle, not as nice high as like you're doing the uh, front squat. All right, so he has a nice erect position, the bar is resting on the anterior delts. So he's gonna perform a dip and drive motion, so he's gonna find a quarter squat. It's not gonna be very slow, it's gonna be a control move. 
all right? Once he finds his corner squat, then he's going to explode up while extending his arms and getting his head through the bar. Uh, a lot of athletes that we train in our facility, like they love to rush when they're doing this movement. You don't really want to rush when you're doing a power movement. You want to take your time. So you always want to reset the bar on the anterior delts before you perform another movement. And the same thing with the lunge. Before you dip, before you dip, you want to activate all your stabilizers. Whenever you go to the Olympic living competition, you're over here coaches yell out, tight, tight back. So that's what they're talking about. When you're performing these multi-joint movements, you want everything to be tight, your glutes, your quads, and your core. Alright? Let's practice that. Alright, here we go, guys. Yeah, no. Yeah, strip the weights if you need to. Uh, there's another barbell over here that's clean. Again, tight core. You're going to hear tight core on every movement pattern that we're doing. Foundation comes from the core. Still part of your warm up. <laughs> Tight core, dip and drive. All right, good. We can keep moving on, guys. Good job. That's four down. Everybody count. It's three. All right. All right, next one. Tackle, you're going to be up. You're going to be doing the pull. Pull. Did the push. Now we're going with pull. All right, so for this exercise for the pull, uh, we're choosing the barbell bent over row. The reason I chose it is because, one, uh, hardly anybody does it right. And two, I, uh, I like the full body uh, so first, before we even uh, touch the bar, what we're going to do is we're going to create an active plank. Okay, so starting from the top down, okay, uh, he's going to call his abs and nice tight. He's going to pull his whole legs down and back, okay. Uh, I want his stance to be maybe just outside of his shoulders, okay. So this is what I want to do is I want to create tension from the ground up. So I'm going to ask him to act like he's drawing his feet apart, okay. He's going to activate his quads, okay, his glutes. So right now you can't really see it, but he's tight all the way down. So from this position, uh, piggybacking back onto what Hutch did at the beginning, we're going to be hinging. So I'm going to ask him to push his butt back while drawing his feet together, creating tension, keeping his active plank engaged. If he needs to, he can bend his knees a little bit, but he still needs to have tension at the hamstrings for this one. So uh, the other thing that I'm going to ask him to do is his grip just outside his shoulders. I'm going to ask him to pull that bar across. So now we have tension in through here, in through here. His hamstrings are tight. Everything is tight. It's full body tension. Okay? So in this position, what we're going to be doing is we're going to keep the bar close. He's going to get this bar. He's going to slowly bring it to his belly button. Go ahead. Hold it for a second, slow on the way back down. Good, right there, go ahead, give me a couple more. Just keep going, okay. So in this position, I prefer slow, um, or fast on the way up, slow on the way down. You wanna make sure that you're keeping it close to one or two or far out in front, and you wanna maintain your active plank and your tension all the way down, okay. So again, okay. So recap, from page point, your shoulder legs down and back, he's throwing his abs and it's super tight, okay, with his stance. He's drawing his feet apart, uh, activating his squats, okay? He's hinging at the hips, he's getting those hamstrings involved here, okay? Uh, once we grab the bar, pull that bar apart, okay? Now we have full body tension. We're pulling it up, holding it for a second, slow all the way back down. 
Let's do about five reps or so, and then we'll keep going, guys. Again, you, you hear all these coaches talk about the plank, the core. That's the foundation again. Guys, you guys notice that these are obviously movements that you've guys seen a million times, right? Nothing's different. But what we do see is with, especially the Marines for some reason, their mobility is horrible, okay? So this is why we really focus on the full range of motion, the plank, the squeeze, the hold, and the mobility. So again, you notice she's using a sandbag for this. Everybody else using a barbell, use a kettlebell. Uh, there's a lot of variations that they can use. All right, everybody good? All right, moving on. Miss Rihanna, you got uh, squat. All right, guys, so as you guys know, the squat is probably the most important movement. I don't say that all the time, but the squat's very important. And another one you see a lot of this function with. Something about working at Couple reps, guys. Here we go. You sweating, Master Sergeant? No. All right, good. Shouldn't be. Yeah, nice full range of motion. Engage the core, engage the glutes. Regardless of what equipment they're using, same, same type of uh, engagement, same movement pattern.
couple more, then we're going to move on to the plank, guys. All right, nice job, guys. Randy's got the plank next. Here we go. This is number five or six, right? All right, here we go. Morning, everybody. So we saw a common theme of having even a mobile plank doing a squat, <laughs> lunge. Everything should be maintaining a proper alignment, especially with the trunk of your body. The nice pillar of support, right? So for our movement, we're not trying to do any other rotation. We're trying to build that stability, build that rigid motion, keep that pillar of strength right there in your core. So for us, for the tactical side, we try to challenge fighting against any rotation, any other movement. We want to try to maintain that perfect plan. So for this exercise, we're going to do a rope pull. So as you can see, nice sturdy plane. Legs are engaged. If I had a hundred dollar bill between the butt cheeks, should be able to hold on to that. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> anyway, so the whole time, what I'm doing is pulling the rope down between these legs with arms. So we'll go, uh, what's that, four reps on one arm, four reps on the leg. So as you pull this, chunk of his body is actually engaged the whole time, fighting resistance. Other Marines, if they're doing this, you'll see a lot of times they'll actually rotate, just trying to pull that rope, trying to stay stable. Keep in, it's actually <laughs> trying to keep the feet square and then a little bit wide. A lot of Marines try to show off they have more abs by putting their feet together, but really, you will see a lot of hip rotation. So keep in, chunk of your body is nice and stable. So once he's done on one side, you can switch on over, turn around. So if you like your face this way, <laughs> maybe you do some more work. You gotta raise your right foot on this one, Master Sergeant. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you do some more work, come over, uh, actually pull, we'll be 200 seconds. But then for Marine Corps, especially with a unit PT or unit physical training, it's all about the boundary, trying to build that relationship. So if I'm working with him, he can do a pull while I'm holding a high plane. I'll do a pull, I'll do a pull. And then he'll go back and forth. So this is a good serving exercise for people. It's in the team building, even the challenge. If you want to do a whole tug of war, whatever you want to do. <laughs> so different modality or different ways you can actually vary this. But then it's a really good plank, uh, plank exercise. Challenge back and forth, resisting that rotation. So, all right. Go ahead and spread the ropes out, guys. Guys, do it just like the uh, Randy had last one. Partner up so we can get enough reps in quickly. Just face each other on the plank. Do about three pulls a piece, both arms, and we'll keep moving on to the last foundational movement. Nice job, man. Good. Good job, guys. Very nice. All right, last foundational movement is the rotation. Rotation. And we'll use the battle rope again for this. Again, it's not the only piece of equipment used, obviously, with rotation. Med ball, uh, Russian twist, Russian twist. Uh, a lot of different variations. TRX. Joe is going to show you on the battle ropes what we use for one of our rotational movements. All right. Uh, so rotation uh, for the uh, we're doing uh, standing rope throws and you know for the military population you know rotation we can you know we can do this with you know with the ropes so not as small as body uh, but we're rotating you know think 
know, you know, we gotta relate this to the ring. We're low gear in a vehicle. Okay, we could be striking an opponent. Here, kind of like a grappling throw. We're throwing an opponent, right? Um, now, uh, Matt Sergeant, again, is gonna start out nice and tall with the ropes. You want a good athletic stance, okay? We talked about that good athletic stance. Want to get there first. Um, and kind of have a little slack with the rope as well, okay? If the rope's pop, we're not gonna get too many waves in there, all right? Or power. So that, again, this is a strength, power, speed movement, right? So we got a good athletic stance, reverse grip on the rope, okay? So the, the tips of the handles point toward the ceiling, right? And from here, Mass Art's gonna uh, from, drive from the hips and pivot, rotating and throwing that rope over, okay? So he's gonna pivot, rotate, and throw the rope over. It's a violent movement, okay? I like to tell you, if you have a bad day, get it out of here, okay? So, Rotate, pivot, throw the rope down. Okay? Good. Good. Did you have a bad day? <laughs> <laughs> the mass is feeling a little better. Uh, all right, so standing throws. Uh, let's uh, get on the rope and give it a shot. <clears throat> Guys, notice it. Why, why is he holding the handles like this? Up, reverse grip, instead of like you would on a double wave. Why do you think he's holding it here? In a tactical situation, think about it. What's that? Push forward. If he's going to throw me. I'm a sailor, he's gonna throw me, he's gonna throw me this way, okay? He ain't gonna throw me this way, I hope, okay? All right, here we go guys, couple reps. Drive, make sure you rotate, rotate the foot, flank the foot. You lost me. You, uh, you had a real bad day, didn't you? Dude, I'm glad you're not throwing me down, dude. Oh my God, it's awesome. All right, we're good, guys. Very nice. Good job. All right, real, real quickly, what do you guys, I, I said it throughout the whole presentation, what's the most, what's the biggest piece we're looking to engage? Core. Core. You hear that all the time, right? That's nothing new. All right, even though we were doing a rotational throw there, core. All right, if we don't have the core, we don't have the strength, the power to rotate the rope back, forward, back and forth like we should. Yeah, we can go through the motions, okay, but we're not getting the power that we're trying to develop. All right, same thing where we did the, uh, when Coach Jackal was doing the barbell bent over row. All right, we're still doing a hinge movement, so we're still getting one of the seven foundational movements, but we're also getting the main foundational movement, which is the pull. That's the focus of that movement. So a lot of the movements that we do will cross bridge against other foundational movements, which is the goal, all right? But the main focus is on one of those seven, all right? Um, unfortunately, we, don't have, we ran out of time to do a quick circuit. You guys did a great job. Give them a round. Good job.